Well, it's certainly been a while. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the alternate future of the world. We are on episode 9 now, and I have not recorded one of these videos in a total of three months. You guys have been requesting the heck out of this series to come back, and, uh, you know, I've been postponing it. At first, I was just giving it some time to kind of, you know, breathe, but then I was like, you know, I kind of fell out of touch with the series, kind of forgot what happened, but I managed to catch up with it, and uh, we're good to come back. So if you guys do enjoy this alternate feature of the World Season 2 video, make sure to show some support by leaving a like, subscribing, sharing it with some friends, leaving a comment with your input, and anything like that. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So in the last couple of videos, which I hope you have caught up with, go rewatch them if you haven't, because I had to do that, and I'm sure you guys would have as well. Uh, but we saw the Soviet Union get demolished. We saw Japan kind of start to lose its touch. We saw the allies in the Middle Eastern Pact fighting. We saw the Mediterranean Pact start to get a little bit more democratic. A little bit, though. You know, they're monarchists, so not fully. And yeah, the world is changing, as it always is in the alternate future. But our first event in this video is going to be involving involving japan and uh if you watched the last video you would know that japan invaded some of their colonies and their ally of mongolia in order to assert control over them because if you remember they did rise up against japan and uh, japan was having none of that but the way that they took them out was very unhumane and uh the people of japan really didn't like it and uh, one of those lingering effects of this is actually indonesia leaving the uh the japanese alliance so after they re our allies, Indonesia said, you know what, we're done, we're out. And uh, Indonesia will be taking a more neutral route. Now, they're not really too, um, they're not too keen of the allies, so they're not going to be like joining any other alliances. There really aren't any neutral alliances other than the League of Freedom, uh, but that's like a very like pro-democratic alliance, you know, what the U.S. has influenced and all and how they used to be a part of the League of Freedom. So like, it's kind of appealing to them, but they're not 100% set on joining. So they're just going to focus on themselves for now. Uh, but good thing they left because the Civil War has just erupted in japan so here i have colored in all of mainland japan and as you can see it's one of the largest countries in the world if not the largest country in the world and that's kind of why it's collapsing because it's got too many pieces of land too many different pieces of culture different ethnicities races and uh, you know you had the chinese who were conquered the southeast asians who were conquered uh the mongolians who were partly conquered the koreans who were conquered yeah that's just like a big old melting pot of people who don't like to be ruled by the japanese and uh, that might change here in a second so the most notable areas we have civil war are in taiwan who completely rises up southern southeast asia who once again is rising up southeast china what used to be eastern mongolia and parts of china northern china slash north korea and pretty much all of myanmar so these are what is known as the conquered front the conquered peoples of japan are rising up against the japanese government and boy, do I tell you that these groups have tremendous support, not only from the uh, people who are in the blue area, but from the people who are kind of just across the world. You know, if we take a look at the alliance map, the allies are heavily in favor of this group that just popped up. Uh, the, uh, the Mediterranean order is as well. The access is not so much and neither is the Middle Eastern Pact. But you know, the neutral countries and the League of Freedom as well, they are in support of these rebels because, you know, Japan has been doing some very inhumane stuff and they would like to see an end to that, uh, you know, but no one could really do anything about it because, you know, Japan's like the strongest country in the world at this point, number two, if not. And, uh, well, let me tell you something right now. This is not the end of the Civil War. There's going to be more. Japan will go ahead and call in all of their allies. So we see that their Chinese puppet, uh, joins the war as well as mongolia and the siberian uh thing yeah this is what's called the siberian thing um but the issue with that is that these guys just got out of a war recently and while the people there really are not happy about being under japanese rule especially after what they just did to their home territory slash country so we really see like the people of these countries completely rise up uh the entire area over here rises up mongolia as a whole overthrows its government and rises up against japan which i guess at this point would just be them declaring war on japan the siberian territory is really the only area that doesn't rise up against japan because there's like no one there uh but things really just keep getting worse for japan as the soviet union joins this war in order to reclaim their lost lands and really what the final nail in the coffin is or i guess the final like punch to the face for japan is is that the southern islands in japan are rising up you know tokyo is the stronghold of the government tokyo is like right over here uh, these southern islands which are a little bit further away they're not too keen of the japanese government and honestly they are getting support of the japanese people and uh as we progress on we see more and more provinces in japan starting to kind of rise up against their government and people of japan are heavily supporting this this is like it's kind of like a civilian militia mixed in with the japanese army so the japanese army who you know they're carrying out the inhumane stuff it's kind of hard for them to you know go against the government since you know the government told them to do these things 
but they you know they they went on with it they carried it out so it's not necessarily like these are like good people rising up against japan they're the ones that carried out the inhumane stuff but at the end of the day the government told them to do it uh they i mean they could have stopped themselves from doing it but you know who knows maybe they would have been like punished if they didn't the only good guys in this war are the ones that are over here let's just say that so uh, japan is going to get to work on clearing out these rebellions i mean they're not going to be too strong of course they are fighting like a military civil war so their first success is up here in the north pushing these guys out but down here in the south it's a little bit tougher uh this front line is uh pretty packed they do manage to split it in half however they hold out and eventually countries from across the world start to supply these rebels and really just like the people are the ones rising up and they kick out their own government officials you know they're recruiting their own military now and southeast asia at this point is completely lost we see the conquered front start to expand into more populated areas of china this is where japan has a little bit more of a stronghold since they've been developing this area and you know japaneseifying it is that even a word it's not a word but you know with the soviets down this war of course they're going to send in their people uh, they just got crushed in a war so like the the you know the war support is a little bit low in the soviet union they're not really on board with this fully but you know they are on board with getting back their lands even though they you know they don't want to lose all the soviet lives because there's not many left but uh they do focus in on siberia as well now of course this is really hard to invade since it's a giant just ice cap basically but they do eventually make it over to the pacific ocean as for japan they really are losing control over the main mainland because of the war that's going on on their home island so the conquered front manages to make sweepstaking gains as the japanese army that's already over here kind of just folds in and joins in with the red team now remember this is like a total civilian betrayal of the government this isn't just like a few small groups this is like pretty much every like 80 percent of the japanese population and now 90 percent of the japanese population is in favor of this rebellion 75 to 80 percent are actively you know participating in this overthrow and you know not by just like you know fighting because that would be insane that would be an insane amount of people but like you know like donations or like you know working for the new governments stuff like that they're involved but just not like direct conflict so really it's just like japan is completely folding the koreans rise up the chinese manage to take back all of their coastal areas and at this point the mainland is lost russia works a little bit longer on siberia but they eventually pull out of this war and just take what they have and as for the japanese mainland well they lose to Kalin, the northern island is lost and the southern island with the help of you know volunteers and troops from the mainland are able to march up Jap japan's islands take over the coastal areas and eventually get to tokyo assassinate the emperor in a battle over here near the coast coast of or the the west coast of japan the, the highest ranking military officer of the japanese army is killed a few bombing runs happen and some key military bases but from here japan basically just folds and just like that japan is gone or at least the uh the bad japan is gone and this is a world-changing event because you know the strongest country in the world just got completely folded by itself civilians and of course you know they weren't all civilians some of them were conquered people in fact a majority of them were conquered people you could probably say that like 80 percent of japan's population came from over here so so yeah that's really a that's a good perspective of how this was able to happen but uh now we can go ahead and take a look at a peace treaty and this is going to be an interesting one all right so there is a uh, a lot to break down on this peace treaty here because east asia has been completely scrambled into a bunch of blobs and squares which us modern day folks do not understand because this is the alternate history in the alternate future yeah doesn't make sense does it so japan got completely just screwed i mean they didn't get screwed they got what they deserved they have been reduced to their main island, as well as Sagalin, and a small piece of Eastern Asia. That is it. Japan went from the largest country in the world to, uh, you know, not the largest country largest country in the world. But um, there's a lot of new countries, so let's talk about them. Mongolia expanded themselves. They got all of their old land back, plus some. We have an area of Inner Mongolia getting independence. I'm not sure how long this is going to be around. We see that the Central Chinese territory just simply got independence uh xinjiang still here the himalayan republic that's still there nothing new over here uh, but we cut down south we see myanmar got independence and now of course these borders are going to be a little bit different and that's just because it's based off of how the war was fought what different groups did what fronts were established uh, going down south though we see that the the siam republic got released we see that actually they lost a little bit of land they lost the little tail the peninsula that came down here toward like the strait of malacca and indonesia and that's mostly because this was a different military group that rose up taiwan is independent we have manchuria getting independence and finally korea getting independence now also the soviet union they got a little bit of land back they got some land from the siberian territory as well as some land from china or i guess actually themselves or what used to be themselves and now have access to the pacific ocean over here now looking at the alliance map there's a whole lot of white over here of course japan still has itself and its little territory up here but uh you know since it's just themselves this alliance really doesn't exist anymore and i'm not really sure if the japanese would want it to exist you know considering that you know 
everything that's happened. So there are no longer any alliances over here in East Asia, and really the only alliances that do exist in Asia as a whole include the Middle Eastern Pact and the Allies in the Middle East, and then, you know, the Philippines. But I... If I were to make my own continental map, now I know this doesn't align with real life and it's just make-believe, but I would like to consider the Philippines a part of Oceania instead of Asia, even though I know geographically that doesn't make sense. Same thing with Indonesia. Like, I would, if I were to draw a border between Oceania and Asia, it would be like this. Like, this would be Oceania, and then everything else would be Asia. But unfortunately, it's not like that, and uh, Oceania is more like this. Anyway, Japan got exploded, and there's a lot of new independent countries over here, and many of these countries are weak, and their governments are not fully, you know, they're not fully functional yet, you know, they don't have an armed forces or anything like that. So a lot of these countries are gonna start to look towards alliances. I know, I was just talking about how they're all neutral, but uh, that's gonna change very soon. First and foremost, we have the uh, we have Taiwan joining the allies. This is a small pickup. The allies don't see an issue with it. You know, Taiwan's probably not gonna get into any wars, so they don't have an issue with them joining. And uh, this is gonna be a unique one because this is the first time that this has ever happened, but a country outside of the Americas will be joining the League of Freedom, and that country will be Myanmar. Now, Myanmar joins this because they don't want to join the allies you know if you get involved with any of the major alliances you're gonna get pulled into a war and Myanmar really just wants peace you know they don't want to be involved with any wars they they were a part of the Raj and then the Raj fell apart and then they got invaded by Japan or maybe they were invaded by Japan no they were part of the Raj got invaded by Japan were subject to Japan got made into a colony and then they got invaded by Japan and then they got released so now they really just want peace they're done but as for some of these other uh, countries here they're going to form a new alliance and the members of this alliance are going to include china inner mongolia and manchuria i'm actually just going to be calling this the east asian alliance um i feel like having all these names you know i mean the allies and axis that's easy but you know, there's the mediterranean order the middle eastern pact those are also pretty simple names but then you get things like the league of freedom that's kind of hard to remember with all these different alliances and if i name this thing anything special i feel like i'm going to forget it so i'm just going to call it the east asian alliance uh, some countries that are considering joining this include um, Siam and Korea, uh, but they refrain from now. They don't really think they need to join it because there aren't really any threats to them in the area. You know, Manchuria, they border the Soviet Union. That could be a threat, but they're pretty weak. Uh, Mongolia, they're kind of going through it right now. You know, they just got a new government and then they killed their own government. So really, they're just trying to figure themselves out. And then we have over here, we have Xinjiang, who is a, uh, well, they were an ally of Japan before they fell apart. And, uh, you know, without Japan there to really help them out, they don't see a point in not joining the Middle Eastern Pact. So they joined the Middle Eastern Pact. And at this point, I don't think it, we should really call it the Middle Eastern Pact anymore. I think it should probably be like the Asian Axis or, no, that sounds dumb. We'll call it the Axis of Asian Countries. Uh, that could change. If you guys can think of a better name, let me know in the comments. But yeah, East Asia has properly exploded. And now we can look somewhere else in the world. Oh, uh, the world's actually pretty calm right now, surprisingly enough. And the most intense of things are like over here in the Middle East, where there's like three different alliances at each other's throats. And really, it's kind of complicated because, you know, the Middle East or the, the Mediterranean order, their main goal is to conquer all the Mediterranean. But, you know, they've been getting friendly with the Allies and the Allies' own Mediterranean coast. So uh, they kind of changed their ambition over to just, you know, sticking how they are now. Italy controls a very large amount of land, and uh, they're honestly okay with that. But now we have a world event occurring, and this is kind of sudden. Now, there really is no UN. There's like a mini version of it where like countries, like the heads of all the different alliances, minus like maybe the Axis and the Asian Axis meet up. Basically just like, it's like, it's like a scaled down version of the UN. And they, you know, they're like talking and stuff, you know, like, you know, this whole colony thing it really is it's not right and you know most of the countries agree it's hard to rule colonies um you know being across the ocean and everything and with the people rising up in japan it's really set a motion of self-liberation to a lot of these colonies that exist now there's not really many colonies that exist but there's still a few so in order to stop anything that happened in japan from happening to any of the world's colonies we see that france gives independence over to chad and whatever that was the Central African Republic. Uh, I don't actually, I can't remember if they already. I know Algeria is independent, but they're just part of the Allies. I'm not sure if these two are, but if they aren't, they are now. Same thing with Mozambique and Madagascar. They are now independent countries. And uh, since they were granted independence, they're more favorable and or towards their uh, past rulers, and they're willing to stay in the Allies. Although, if a war were to break out, they wouldn't be doing too much. As for the Middle Eastern countries, though, it's a little bit more complicated. Mesopotamia just came back under British rule, and it's a little bit hostile, but they will give it to the benefit of the doubt, and they will allow them to elect their own ruler, and they give Mesopotamia their independence on the basis that they remain in the Allies for the next five years. After that, they can either stay or they can go. And the elected leader of Mesopotamia, who was involved with the conflict between the Middle Eastern Pact 
and the uh, the allies. So he's kind of he's got the history of you know like he fought against the allies, but he was once like a part of the British force there. But he is a native of the area, so it's like he's been he's played both sides. So it's like a perfect person to get elected. But now coming back down here, this is the complicated part. This is a big mess of just mess and what the brits are going to do is they're going to grant qatar independence and then they're going to go ahead and smash together these two colonies in order to form southern arabia and then they will give this country independence which is probably pretty unstable because they just got forced together but alas it is what it is other than that there's only one territory that remains and that's the siberian territory they are granted independence and uh, honestly i'm not really sure what they're going to do because i don't think they can function on their own they might be able to with this small piece of land down here but most likely what will happen is that they just get annexed by the Soviets. Who knows? Maybe they can make it work. But with that being said, I'm looking across this map and I'm only seeing two more countries which are considered to be colonies. And those two colonies include Libya and Ethiopia. Ethiopia is pretty easy. They're just granted independence. But when it comes to Libya, there is a little bit of an issue and that is Egypt. Now, Egypt formerly was a part of the Allies under British control. And when the Axis and the Allies originally fought World War II, Egypt lost a bunch of land. Egypt wants that land back. You know, they think it's rightfully Egyptian lands and they've been friendly with Italy for a while. The only issue is, you know, Italy's fine with granting them the land back. It's not too much land. It's like to there maybe maybe even like rover something like that uh but libya the new government which has been formed but it's not fully independent yet they don't want that to happen so we do get like a border conflict between these two nations but eventually a resolution is adapted basically egypt will pay a certain amount of money i don't know how much and in return they will get roughly what they had now uh this is not what egypt's border looks like i try my best okay anyway this border falls egypt gets their old land back and libya becomes an official country so taking a look at it now there are no longer any colonies in the world just land that is owned uh belarus is in a puppet state i don't know if i mentioned that they are their own country just under the axis i guess you can make the case that french guiana is a colony but i think it's kind of similar to what puerto rico is to the u.s in real life it's a territory it's been integrated for a while maybe you can call it a colony maybe you won't but i'm just gonna leave it as is anyway we do have an event taking place in africa this is a pretty interesting one or maybe not because this has probably happened about a hundred times before but the drc and the uh, the east african federation will unite into one and well they're gonna keep the name east african federation i mean it's more central but then it's eastern but we'll keep the name it's fine and with that this country grows in power population economy all of that so that's really good for them has literally no effect on anyone else um but you know they're a neutral country all these countries down here are fairly neutral but let's talk about switzerland if you remember switzerland this is not normal switzerland this is switzerland from alternate future of the world season one go watch the lore trailer there's a lore trailer just search on the channel search alternative future of the world season 2 trailer that explains some of the lore but this switzerland is not normal switzerland i'm not going to go into too much detail because i want to leave it to you guys but they tried to stop world war ii from happening they tried to make it so you know germany never rose to power and killed all the millions of people that it did uh but in their attempts to stop that from happening they made it worse uh as we can see germany is still around they're very big and people are suffering additionally with switzerland messing with the end of world war ii we get a whole new freaking mess over here in asia at the end of the day japan did fall and you know there were no nukes used nukes have never been used in this world but we do get a middle eastern pact that rises up the only good thing that switzerland has done for this world is united the americas and uh, you know no one over here is really aggressive towards each other other than that you know maybe africa is a little bit better than it is now mm, maybe other but yeah once again other than that it's not good and they feel guilty for that but anyway talking about europe now tensions are brewing uh germany they are expansionists they want to expand but they can't expand because they're surrounded by a bunch of alliances so germany is going to start gearing up uh no one knows what their exact plans are but the mediterranean order and the allies both start to get ready there's also some military activity activity in the middle eastern pact but for now they just they're just kind of ignoring it you know they just got out of war they're probably just rebuilding you know military infrastructure stuff like that the allies brush it off and it's probably safe to do so to be honest but yeah that is going to do it for today's alternate future of the world video so if you guys did enjoy make sure to show some support the series is back and if you want to see it continue to be back uh showing support helps that but yeah looking at the channel now and how it's kind of like taking a step back uh the series would have been considered above average if i he yeah, kept doing it so yeah it's back um probably here to stay uh but i do want to say that the uh what i have planned out for this series is actually changing a little bit originally i was going to do a 20 episode season but i'm not sure if i'm doing that now and uh you guys will find out why soon enough but yeah once again that's going to do it for this video if you guys did enjoy make sure to show some port some port yeah show a port support is appreciated thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one
And of course, thank you to all the super fans, which include Matthew Newman, Yam Yam, Kali Speaks Plays, Shadow Gamer Z, Deva Edits, Mr. Bonk7, Hammer Toad 45, Patrick Clauser, Connor the Gamer, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Poland Country Ball, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, DW Cool Dude, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.